Hello, and welcome to TPM's 4-Minute Friday. My name is Dan Warren, and I'm an application engineer here at TPM. In today's video, we'll review some of the various ways to create a stacked wall condition. We're going to create walls that have a combination of brick and EIFS on their exterior faces. While I will review the fundamental workflows for each example, we won't be able to take a deep dive into the various pros and cons of each method. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we can discuss. So let's get started. Here we have five seemingly identical walls. Each wall has the same appearance, but I've used five different modeling workflows. We're going to start with example A. This particular wall sample was created using four independent basic walls. Each wall's top and bottom constraints correspond with the building's levels. I'll be using reference lines as guides to expedite the modeling process. As I model each of the wall segments, I am changing the wall type and adjusting the top and bottom constraints to create the look I want. This allows me to place my walls on top of each other without changing views. The warning message you see states that the elements I'm modeling are not visible in the current view, meaning I can't see my work because I'm modeling elements on level 2 and 3 while looking at the level 1 floor plan. After the wall segment is modeled, all I have to do is place my windows and finish up. In the second example, I'm going to place one brick on metal stud wall, then use the cut profile tool to make an opening for my EIFS. Start by creating a wall from level 1 to level 4. Then switch to an elevation or section view, pick the wall and activate the edit profile tool. This lets me sketch a new wall profile. It can be helpful to use split element with trim to clean up my boundary sketches. Once the new wall profile is completed, switch to the level 2 floor plan and draw in the EIFS wall segment. This wall will go from level 2 to 3, filling in the wall profile. Finally, finish out the wall segment by placing your windows. In the third example, one stacked wall and one basic wall are used in combination to create the wall sample. If you're unfamiliar with stacked walls, a stacked wall is a combination of two or more predefined wall types that work together as a single wall entity. In the type editor, under Edit Structure, set each of the stacked wall's layers and set their height. Two important items to note. When working with stacked walls, one layer must be set to variable and the wall height cannot be shorter than the sum of the predefined wall segment heights. In this example, that means the stacked wall cannot be shorter than 36 feet tall. Now draw in the stacked wall and add the basic wall to it. Our fourth sample uses parts to create a stacked wall. From a plan view, first draw in one wall segment. Then we'll switch to elevation and add in the windows. Now I'm going to switch to a 3D view to take a closer look at the wall. The Create Parts tool breaks the existing wall into parts allowing us access to the wall's individual layers. Use the Create Parts tool and now you can see and pick the individual layers within the wall. Pick the exterior brick layer and use the Divide Parts tool. Click Edit Boundary, then set your working plane. Do this by clicking the Set Work Plane button, then choose the Pick Plane option and pick the face of the brick. Now switch to an elevation or section view and sketch in the EIFS boundary. Click Accept twice to finish defining the new part. Now pick the part you've just created and in the Properties window uncheck the Material by Original parameter. Click the ellipses in the Material parameter and use the Material browser to select the EIFS material. In our final example we're going to use a curtain wall to create the stacked wall condition. 
This workflow is easiest if you use or redefine a basic curtain wall with no preset parameters. All the grid parameters should be set to none and the default panel type is none. Now draw in one curtain wall from level 1 to level 4. You can see this creates one giant panel. Now use the curtain grid tool to place the curtain grids at each level and at the center of the wall. Use the add slash remove segments tool to clean up the curtain grid lines. Curtain panels can be any wall type, so just pick each panel and change the panel to the desired wall type. Finally, complete the wall by adding the windows. Now these workflows aren't the only way to create stacked walls, they're just a handful of workflows I thought might be useful. I hope this video has helped you rethink some of the ways Revit can be used to create complex wall conditions. If you have any comments, please leave them below as I'd really like to hear your thoughts about the tools reviewed today. Thank you for joining me for TPM's 4-Minute Friday. My name is Dan Warren and I hope you have a great day.